This is Joseph Drust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, is there a good workflow for importing SketchUp models into ZBrush? So to start off, I have ZBrush loaded up, and I'm just going to go through a process of taking a model from the application SketchUp and how you can bring it into ZBrush to allow you to sculpt on it. So I'm first just going to tab over to SketchUp quick. So here I have SketchUp Make, and I've just made this simple shape inside here. So it has a few complex shapes in it, but it's just like a little part that I may want to import into ZBrush and start sculpting on. So before we export this model out and then import into ZBrush, we want to first come through and help SketchUp establish some triangulation. So we're going to export this model out with triangles, but since these are all surfaces inside of SketchUp here, we're just going to use the line tool quick and we're just going to help SketchUp determine where these triangles are going to be created. So to do this, I'm going to come to the top here and I'm going to select the lines tool or the tool that looks like a pencil here. So I'm just going to come across surfaces like this. I'm going to click one endpoint and click another endpoint and just bridge areas like so. So this is going to help in that triangulation process when we export this model out in SketchUp. So I'm just going to come through and find any of those edges like this and then just help bridge the gap of those areas. So just coming through and finding these points and just doing simple things like this. So especially around areas with circles and then any areas where you have things like this. So just taking those endpoints and doing something like that so that you have a clear triangulation line from one of those endpoints to another point. This is going to just help sketch up export. So I'm just going to come through quick and just do that. So that looks pretty good there. And I'm going to get the bottom too. It's that same process. Just find an endpoint, click, find an endpoint, click. Maybe bridge these two circles here and then bridge the half points like so. And so now I have gone through and just kind of established a little more guidelines for SketchUp when it's going to be exported. So after you have this completed, we now just need to go to the file menu up here and we're just going to go to export and then choose 3D model. So this is going to open up a window like so. Now once this window opens up, we want to navigate down here at the bottom to the options area. And in here, we want to make sure we have this triangulate all faces turned on. And this is just going to allow this model to come in looking correct into ZBrush here. So I'm just going to make sure that's checked. Hit OK. And now I'm going to save this model out. And just export it out. And so you can see now the model has been exported out as an OBJ. Now I'm going to go back to ZBrush. So now I'm back inside of ZBrush here. I'm going to navigate over here to the tool palette and I'm going to click import. And then I'm just going to select the file that we just exported from SketchUp and then just simply click open. And now I should have that SketchUp model being brought right into ZBrush like so. Now you'll notice I have some striations on the edges of the model here. And that's because when I created the shape in SketchUp, I didn't have enough points on that curve. So I could alleviate that by increasing the count of the geometry that's created in SketchUp. But since I already have the model inside of ZBrush here, there's a few processes you can do so you can divide this mesh up. So currently, if I come through and start dividing this model, it's going to start giving you something like this. So this is definitely not what you're looking for. So we need to establish some things inside of ZBrush here to tell ZBrush how to handle this model. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create some polygroups on the mesh. So I'm going to go to the tool palette up here. I'm going to go down to the polygroup area here, and I'm going to do a groups by normals. This is going to look at the angles on your mesh here, and it's going to apply a new polygroup to each of those areas. So simply clicking on this with the defaults oftentimes will get you exactly what you're looking for. So you can see it's giving me a clear distribution of polygrouping through here, but some areas like this are still getting the same polygroup, and then same with these parts here. So I want to isolate these areas a little bit further. So I'm just going to hold Control and Shift to select the Select Rectangle Brush. And then I'm just going to simply click on one of these polygroups that did not give a clear divide. So this part here. And this is just going to isolate that section. Now when you're doing this process, it's also helpful to turn on double-sided. So I'm going to go to the Tool Palette over here. I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom to the Display Properties, open this up. I'm going to turn Double On. This is just going to allow me to see the front and back faces of the model, which is going to let me select these areas a little bit easier. Now, after I have this like so, I can now go back to my polygroup tab here, and I'm just going to play with this maximum angle tolerance slider here. So by default, it's set to 45, so I'm going to crank it all the way down to 1, and then I'm just going to click group by normals. 
and it's just going to apply new poly grouping to that visible part of my mesh. So you can see now I have a division of this top part and the sides, and then I have this rainbow effect that's being distributed across those curved parts. So I'm just gonna hide this poly group here. So I'm gonna hit Control and Shift to get that select rectangle brush. I'm gonna click a point to hide that area. Then I'm gonna hide this poly group, Control, Shift, click. Then I'm gonna hide this poly group. And now I'm left with these parts. So now with these parts, I can come through and now do an auto groups, which is going to look at the geometry islands that are visible there, and it's gonna give me a new poly group for all those areas. So now I've gone through and established clean poly grouping for those parts. And if I hold Control and Shift and click off in a blank space to bring back my entire model, I should have a good distribution of poly grouping across the entire surface. So all those flat areas should have a new poly group, and any area that has those curved surfaces should have their own polygroup as well. So after we have our model cleaned up with the polygrouping like this, we can now apply creasing by those polygroups. So I'm gonna navigate to the tool palette again, go to the geometry tab, open up the crease area here, and I'm gonna click this crease polygroup button. So it's gonna look at those polygroups and it's going to generate a crease between each of those polygroups. So simply click that, and now you'll notice that all those polygroup areas have a crease line established between them. So once you have a crease line on your model, when you attempt to divide this mesh up, that crease is going to hold, and then it's going to smooth any areas in between that creasing. So this is extremely handy when using models that may have been exported from programs like SketchUp. So if I click Divide now, you're gonna see it's gonna start dividing my model. So you can see it's giving me more resolution in those areas, and it's still holding that shape. Now you will see that this area through here is still getting some visual artifacting. So it's not looking as smooth as it could be. And this is because it consists of all those triangles. So I'm just gonna undo this here back to this version with no subdivisions on it. And I'm gonna come through now and just clean this area up with the Z Modeler brush. So I'm gonna remove the triangles and convert this all to quad. So to do this, I'm gonna select the Z Modeler brush. So I'm gonna hit B on my keyboard. I'm gonna isolate by the letter Z and then I'm gonna hit M to select the Z Modeler brush. And then I'm gonna hover over one of these edges here where you can see that visual triangle. I'm gonna press spacebar to go to the Z Modeler edge action menu. In here, I'm gonna choose the action of the leap. And I'm gonna make sure my target is set to edge. So now I can come through and just simply click on these edges and they're going to remove those triangulated edges. So now I can come through just this part here and just clean this entire area up. So just coming through and clicking just to remove those triangle artifacts. So now I have that entire area there cleaned up. Now you wanna double check to make sure that if you did an undo process, you didn't undo your polygroup creasing. So I'm gonna go back to the geometry tab here and just crease those polygroups again. And now if I divide up, my model should be smooth all across the front there and all those areas should look good. So, so now I have something like this. So this is more of what I'm looking for for my final part. Now after you have your model divided up, like so, so let's get up to say four divisions there. Now let's say you wanna start sculpting on this. Well, since this model was still that triangulated mesh, if I select say the clay buildup brush and I try sculpting on it, you're still not gonna get a quality mark on the model here. So now we just need to take this mesh and do a little more processing with it. So one option you can do is you can take this mesh now that you've divided up and you convert it to a DynaMesh. So I can come to the Geometry tab here, I can go to the DynaMesh area, I can set my resolution to say something around 512, turn off Project, turn off Blur, and click DynaMesh. And now I can process this model with DynaMesh, which is gonna go through and make the entire surface of the mesh even. So now I can come through and sculpt on it, and it's gonna give me that same quality stroke wherever I sculpt. So that is one process you can use to clean up that mesh. Another process you can do is to use ZRemesher. So under the geometry tab as well, we can open up this Z remesher area here. In here, we wanna turn on this keep groups since we went through and set up all these nice poly grouping on our mesh here. And now we can set our target polygon count somewhere between five and 15,000 polygons, and then simply click Z remesher. Now, after this process completes, if you turn on your polyframe here, you're gonna get something like this. So it's gone through and it's held all that poly grouping that we originally established and then it's remeshed the entire model. So our model still looks good and it has a little bit less polygons than the DynaMesh version there. And we can still divide this up to get some nice 
soft and hard edges. And now if we sculpt on our model here, it's also going to give us a clean result. So those are a few workflows you can use with models that you have imported in from programs like SketchUp. So taking your mesh, importing it in as triangles, using the polygrouping to establish clear polygroup breakups on your model, applying that crease by polygroup, and then dividing your model up, turning it into a DynaMesh, or even reprocessing it with the ZRemesher. So I hope that helps. If you have any other questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing.